Hey, watch. All decked out for Halloween? Oh, hell yeah, I am. It's my second favorite holiday, so I gotta get the rift ready. I got these decorations up, some themed cocktails ready, and I have what we're playing on the TV. Sweet. I love Halloween as well. My place is all set for sewing right now. Is that a Rob Zombie trippy band or something? No, it's the Wiccan and Pagan version of Halloween. It's mainly celebrating the fall harvest. Oh, right. I forgot you're a Wiccan. Despite it being in your name. Well, it's not like I'm the only Wiccan you know. Well, you're the only pony I know. It's not exactly common in Ponyland. Well, the show has brought forth some Wiccan and Pagan views, like, like Zakora, for example. Even though her region where she's originally from would be leaning more towards Voodoo Queen. But the closest to a Wiccan or Pagan might be Fluttershy. Fluttershy? How could she- Wait, hold on a second. If this is a video setup, then these peaches are coming with me. Hey! You know, if you're gonna grab a mare like that, the least you could do is buy them dinner first. I'll let you have some candy for my stash. Well, <laughs> get those tinfoil hats on because we're going for a ride. Guru readings, points, and Pegasus is the Watcher Pony here. And I'm Season the Wiccan, and today we're here to present to you a theory. No, 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 no. We are not getting sued. Besides, this is more like Gaijin Goomba. Fine. But we're bringing forth the idea of Fluttershy possibly being a Wiccan, and before you negative Nancys in the comments start claiming that we're grasping at straws, we have stuff to back up these claims. We do? I mean, yes, we do. Starting with one of the most obvious ones, her connection to animals. Wiccans and pagans have a very strong connection with the natural world, including plant life and animal life, and respecting Mother Nature as a whole, which Flutters has in spades. Indeed she does. Whenever we see her, she seems to have a knack for talking to animals. Not just talking like how you talk to a cat but they don't listen, but actively talking to them and having them respond back. And we have seen that Fluttershy has had this at a very young age, in fact, it appears to be your calling in life. Not only that, but Fluttershy has been shown to have a wide knowledge of plants and flowers as well. Which does go hand in hand when taking care of herbivores and omnivores. You need to know which plants will sustain them and give them the right nutrients and won't be poisonous to them. Which Plain Devil's Advocate could be seen as animal caretaking aspects, not just Wiccan. But we do have a lot more besides that. I mean, one of her best friends is another pagan like you said, Sakura. Not exactly the same area of pagan, but we have seen Fluttershy talk to her, and she probably learned a thing or two about potions or other things while there. As I've stated before, given that Sakura is from Equestria's version of Africa, it would mean that Sakura might be from a voodoo sect of the practice, since Africa is where voodoo originated, and was later brought overseas to its American hotspot, New Orleans, Louisiana, through the slave trade. And there are a lot of differences between Wicca and Voodoo, and there are people within both groups that do not like each other. But there are the few like Zakora and Fluttershy that do get along and learn from each other. For example, Zakora teaching her about different plants in the Everfree and the properties they can be used for. Speaking of New Orleans, let's not forget about one of the episodes that really contributes to this, Health of Information. Well, Flutters needs to make a cure for a disease of Zakora being turned into a tree, which sounds completely horrifying, and if it's one of those vampire trees from Japan that is 10 levels of nope. Remember Fluttershy, be careful what you wish for. Was that a callback this whole time? I need to keep analyzing to stop my brain from blowing up. Anyway, we do see Flutters having to make a potion, and in here it does sow her knack for healing others with her skills. Which is another thing Wiccans, Pagans, and a lot of branches of the practice get into. Not to the level of replacing modern medicine. Believe me, if we had the cure to cancer, we would let you know. But stuff like curing yourself of a sickness like a cold or a flu, or in this case, not being turned into a tree. All with healing herbs that you can find in the woods and or your own backyard is very common. But we do see that aspect as well, because Flutter still needs to see a vet when Angel gets injured, showing there is only so much that she can do as far as her skills with healing animals. We can cure small aches and pains and illnesses, but we can't heal broken limbs with herbs. We can offer herbs to brew into a tea to help ease the pain afterwards, but that's really the best we can do. Unless you splint it like Fluttershy did in Season 1. Speaking of, we also see she does falter in knowledge, like her lack of knowledge of what the hell a phoenix is. Which is common because even when you learn a craft, you will still always be learning. Hell, with every new book, every new video I watch by practitioners on YouTube, and when I talk to my chat with 
other active practitioners, I'm always learning something new. You can never know everything there is to know about the practice since it expands far and wide over many different types of magic and there is no singular piece of sacred text like a Bible, a Torah, or a Quran, you're pretty much left to your own devices and your own moral compass to pave your pathway. Much like how Fluttershy carved her own path going from just a caretaker to Wiccan, with learning some more potions as well as more animal care and stuff over time. Well that can also be said about from where she started in Season 1. Yes, Flutters is kind and nurturing like a lot of Wiccans and Pagans are, but like myself, she was extremely timid, never stood up for herself, paranoid about everything, and didn't like confrontation. And here's the thing, yes, Wiccans and other practitioners are generally very kind and positive people, but we're not pushovers, and we are allowed to stick up for ourselves. Which Fluttershy eventually starts doing, spread love, but don't be a doormat. Indeed C does, for better or for worse. But even still, C does glow for the better, and honestly we can go on and on, but I fear we've made our point pretty well. But now we want to hear what you guys think. Do you agree or disagree? Do you think we miss anything? Feel free to put your two cents in the comments down below. So yeah, this was fun. Thanks for having me, Red Bro. Anytime, sis. It was great to get your knowledge about this. And next time we will be looking at a horror anime for the next part of the Halloween videos. Sweet. So, while I'm here, wanna hang out? Sure. And do what exactly? Later. Glad you were up to marathoning Tim Burton movies with me. When it's night before Christmas, of course. Well, I have Corpse Bride up next after this. Sweet.